Hey there, fellow Wackadoos. Welcome on back. And uh, once again, tis I, Dr. Doodle, a.k.a. King Nutjob in these parts. Uh, but listen, hey, welcome back to the, the this place, Q-Basic Asylum. And because I don't say it enough, I want to say it now. Thank you so much for watching all these crazy videos. I'm assuming, so, of course, you have. Unless you haven't, in which case... <laughs> anyway, all seriousness... Well, so this is episode 11, yeah, Twin Towers 11, how about that? Uh, so episode 11, and yeah, if you watched last episode, you saw how easy it is to, to use the mouse. Now that we got the code to work with that, that subroutine popping in there, you're good. Uh, so this one, this time we'll do something actually useful with it, how about that? I mean, the game's fun, all that stuff, but... We'll show you how you can make something useful. We're doing a calculator program. I know everyone's on a calculator. I don't mean just type in the numbers. I mean, poke them in like a regular calculator. So that's what we'll be doing this time. And um, yeah, here we go. Alrighty. Well, as you see, I've done bring up QBA11.base. Uh, that's our calculator program. And of course, you'll want to download that in, in the, in the, down the thing or there. Bring it up as well to follow along. So we'll run this quick and see what we got here. Down here, run. Uh, DOS box doing its nonsense. And here we have typical uh, calculator program. No, no big surprise here. Let's take uh, 20, 1, 12. Okay, there's a number times 3 equals 6336. Or try um, 704 times 3 equals, hey, 2112. How about that? What about 3% um, of 2112 equals 63.36. In any case, you get the idea. Your typical calculator deal. We cl click clear to exit and then over here to quit. Boom, we're done. It says, thanks for using QBasic Calculator. Have an incredible life. And remember, you're an amazing person. You. You're an amazing person. Bye bye now. So click mouse to exit. Boop. And we get press any key to continue. And here we are back to code. So now here's the deal. We have, okay, we've done we, uh, declare sub mouse funk. If you remember from the last video, subs all about using the mouse. We saw how if you just copy this routine here into your program or start a new program with, uh, with this routine and you're all good to go. Now you just call mouse with one of the three parameters. Uh, mouse one displays the mouse cursor. Mouse 2 hides the mouse cursor, and mouse 3 reads the buttons and coordinates. That's the meat of it right there. You want to know what buttons press, where it is, etc. So, view, we'll go back to the main main program. All right, and we start by initializing our program as always. We declare the sub mouse funk. Again, that deals with the actual mouse. Uh, next, we do screen 9, color 14. This sets it in screen mode, which, uh, what's screen 9? Just quick here, screen uh, scroll down here. Oh, by the way, if you want to know screen modes, click on screen, then here, modes, boop, and it'll tell you screen one, two, three, four, where's, uh, oh, 11, d -d 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 -d. screen nine is 640 by 350 pixels and 16 colors. Okay, so escape there. So that's how, that's our screen mode. Next, we set color 14, one, that would be, uh, 14 is yellow for a foreground, and then one is blue. So kind of like you're seeing now, yellow text on a blue background. Uh, so next, this is the draw screen section here. We do all our lines to draw the actual box, the buttons, etc., etc., etc. Here we print, print divide, multiply, subtract. Uh, here's where's add there somewhere. Anyway, uh, this percent thing plus okay equals all these characters. Put them all in lines, 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 more lines. And then we got to what's down here. Oh, here, these lines here, This these draw a little button up top right here for the quit button and it print quit on top there, the text for quit. And lines, lines, lines. Then finally, QBasic Calculator by Dr. Doodle, February 2022. Now, we do all that, we draw our screen, mouse one turns on the mouse cursor so we can see where we're clicking. Now we get to the start of the main program. And this is gonna, it, it's actually pretty simple when you get to the hang of it, but the, the logic's a little bit twisted, so we'll go slow and get through this uh, a step at a time. Now, first of all, if you notice, while in key equals what? What's this while and then when down here? This is similar to the do loop, do, the, do something until loop, do while loop. 
except this is while instead of do. It's an older technique that's, uh, I guess, cubasic, I'm sorry, basic A, well, I guess actually it makes my Stoss basic use this uh, technique because they didn't have do loop in those versions. So it's older. It's really here for compatibility with older versions, but it still works. Uh, however, I prefer do loop for simple reason. You see here, while something, uh, then we just loop back here to when. And obviously, if you recall, when we do the do loop, we can do something while something is true. Or we can do something until something is true. Well, with a while when, it's, it's only while. It's not until. You can't really do an until with the while command. So I like do loop until something or do loop while something. It's just a little more flexible. But this is another way you can go. And I just thought I'd throw it in there to, to demonstrate how it works. So this is the start of our loop, start of our main program. There's the end right there. And if you notice, first thing we do is set r equals zero, c equals zero. Now this is row and column. We want to set these to zero. Click, uh, call mouse three. That reads the mouse cursor and buttons, etc. And now we're checking the v, the vertical position of the mouse. Uh, and so if it's over 488 pixels from the top, 148. I'm sorry then R equals 1. If it's greater than 177, then R equals, this is row 1, row 2, row 3, row 4, etc. Okay. Now, uh, H, we'll check the horizontal, and if it's greater than 249, then column equals 1. So 249, row 1, uh, column 1, column 2, column 3, column 4. So row 1, row 2, row 3, row 4, column 1, column 2, column 2, 3, column 4. All right. Now, this is, when you click a, a, a button, it reads these numbers, these, yeah, these numbers, the H and V values, and it determines what button you're on. How does it do this? Well, RC stands for row column equals row times four plus C. So uh, let's hear, we'll just, uh, one second here, pause, just a moment. Where's the pause button? Uh, All right, now I've enabled this line here, which just Print some statistics we don't really need in the final pro program, but it helps to explain what's going on. So we'll run this down here. Boop. Da, 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 da. There we go. And if you notice up here, row, column, and key. Uh, first of all, now these are, I'm referring to these as keys, not like keys on the keyboard down there, but calculator keys. I could call them buttons, but that gets confused with the mouse buttons here. So these are, we're calling them keys, K for key. Now, you see that's 7, 8, and 9. Well, they look like numbers, but that's actually characters. So it's treating them as characters. For, for another thing, the, the, the divide sign, the multiply, subtract, percent, equals, these are not numbers. So we just treat all these characters, all these symbols, if you will, as if they were characters. We get to numbers later on. But in any case, if you notice, here's our row, column, and key, etc. All right. Uh, here, this is row, I'm sorry, this is... Yes, row zero, and this is row one, two, three, and four. You'll see row four, one, two, three, four, etc. And then columns, we got one, two, three, and four. Now to figure out what key we're on, we just take the row, in this case zero times four, and then add the, the column right here. So row zero times four is zero, plus one, this is key one. Zero times four plus one is one. Again, 0 times 4 plus 2 is 2. 0 times 4 plus 3 is 3. And, of course, 0 plus 4, 0 times 4 plus 4 is 4. Now we come down to this next row. This is actually row 1. So, row 1 times 4 plus, column, plus 1 equals 5. So, row 4, row 1 times 4 plus column is 6, etc., etc. So, basically, it takes row 0 this time... This, 0 times 4 is 0, 1 times 4 is 4, obviously, 2 times 4 is 8, 3 times 4 is 12, and then 4 times 4, yeah, 4 times 4 is 16. The idea being, it, it, it calculates what key you're hovering over by taking the row and the column, multiplying the, the column, row, excuse me, by, by 4, in this case 0, so it's just whatever the column happens to be, that's our button number. Button 1, 2, 3, 4. Now we come down, this is row 1, so row 1 times 4 is 4, uh, plus the column 1, this is key 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Now we're on row 2, which is 16 plus, 
I'm sorry, 8 plus 1 is 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And now here we see the clear button. This is actually, look, key 17, 18, and 19. It looks like one button, but it's three, three separate buttons. We treat them all the same way, so no matter where you click on here, the same thing happens. And finally, we got the equals button. This is number 20. 4 times 5 is 20. This is how the, the program tracks where your mouse is when you click the button. But if you notice, I'm over here outside the, 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 key, the calculator keyboard here, and the numbers are changing because it's just reading how far down it is, how far over it is. Well, if we were out here and happened to click times button when we really want to divide, it would throw things off. So if you notice nothing is happening because, well, I'll quit this here and I'll show you what's going on there. Boop. Okay, here we've got, we can disable this. We don't need this anymore. And if it says if B equals one, meaning you've pressed the button and H is greater than 249, H is less than 342, meaning it's within the keyboard this way. Now we check V if it's greater than 116 and less than 260. So it's, if the mouse is somewhere on that calculator keypad, then we go sub button and it checks what button is pressed and acts accordingly. Now also if B equals 1, H is greater than 540, way over here, V is less than 70 up here, so the top right. Then we're hovering over the quit button, we go sub quit and the program, pretty, pretty evident there. So that's all it does, it loops through the while when, it sets RC to zero, R and C to 0, it checks where the mouse is, checks where the, well yeah, it, sorry, it calls the mouse routine to get the, the coordinates, then it compares them to these numbers and sets the row and column accordingly. RC is equal R times 4, remember row times 4, and plus the column, that gives you the button number. So, we go sub quit, that's when you you're quit the program, down to quit, end of loop, you quit the program. Now here, if you press B and you're within the, the keyboard, we go sub button. So here's buttons, button subroutine. When, when you call this routine, we select case R and C, which we just determined R C right up here. Now, we select case R C. If it's case one, if you're over key one, then K equals seven. If you're over key number two, K equals eight. Let me I'll just I'll make this sure, kind of drill this home here, run this again. All right, here we go. So here we are over button one. I'm sorry, key one. It's key one, even though it says seven, it's key one. Even though this says 8, it's key 2. Even though this says 9, it's key 3, and this is key 4. So forget what the number's on here. These are just symbols that we're using for now. Quit there. And out of here. Back to the code. All right. Disable that. So now we've, we've, we're hovering over one of the buttons, one of the keys, excuse me, and we click the, the left button. So if we're on case 1, if we're over the first key, then K equals 7. If we're over 2, K equals 8. If we're over 3, K equals 9. If we over 4, operation equals divide. Then there's 4, 5, and 6. And here, if we're over the time sign, operation equals X for, for times, multiply. Here's uh, keys 1, 2, and 3. Uh, on, if you're over the negative uh, minus sign, excuse me, operation equals minus or subtract. And... Now, if you recall, these are, are characters and not numbers. Well, we're not treating them as numbers yet, and I'll explain why in a moment. But these are number, these are characters, they are not numbers. Just like the operation is not a number, times is not a number, subtract is not a number, percent is not a number. But when you click on operation, we go sub assign. Uh, any one of the operations, you notice we call this assign goes up. And I'll get to that in a moment. Now, uh, here we've got temp factor equals left temp factor plus k10. What is that all about? We'll get to that in a moment. Uh, first of all, uh, hmm, this is kind of out of order, but bear with me a minute. Notice the assign function here, or assign subroutine. We start out with which factor equals zero. So if which factor equals zero, then factor equals one. We take veil temp factor and stuff it into factor one. In other words, whatever keys we're typing up in here, they get recorded in the temp factor here. And at this point, we, we stuff this value 
into factor one. Now this val, this is where it becomes a number and not, not a bunch of characters. So we stuff that into factor one. That's our first factor. Something times something. Something minus something. Something divided by something. Now, once that's done, which factor becomes one minus which factor? And this is a toggle like we've spoken in previous videos uh, where which factor is there one or zero. If it's one, then we take which factor minus whatever it is now, one, so it ends up being zero. If it's zero, we take one minus whatever it is now, zero, which leaves it one. Basically, every time it hits this line, it switches from one to zero and back. So we've selected our numbers up in here. We've clicked an operation. And then once we hit the operation, we go to assign. It takes whatever temp factor it is whatever the temp value, if you will, takes the value of that numeric variable and stuffs it in factor one. Next time through, we come take the temp factor, the value of it, of these symbols, and stuff it into factor two. Now we've got our factor one or factor two, and we can do some math with it. But if you notice here, we go up here, back to here for a moment. This, I told you it's a little twisted, but it, it, it does work out if you just follow through step by step. So we're, we've selected one of these, these keys up here and we go to temp factor equals left. Now left will help go to well, help here it shows left is or right. Left shows the specific number of leftmost or rightmost characters in a string, whether you're left or right. A string expression is any string expression and then n is the number of characters returned. So for example here we got print left a5 where a is Microsoft basic they're taking the left five characters micro here print right five Microsoft basic the right five is basic the, the left five and the right five so basically it's just selecting a part of a string that's exactly what we're doing here we're taking the left 10 characters so you can type up to 10 different characters one two three four five etc once we selected a key that number goes into temp factor if we add another key maybe we type one maybe you type two for 12 well then that now the two goes here temp factor is one plus the two so now it becomes 12 stuff that in the temp factor all right we type a three so we got left temp factor is now 12 plus the three it becomes one two three if that makes any sense. You see, if I were just to do one plus two, uh, the numbers, it would come up three instead of 12. And if we have 12 plus three, it would come up 15 instead of 123. In other words, we don't want to do the math on it yet. We just want to concatenate with this plus sign. We want to add the next character onto the end. Once we get the full number, like uh, 395, 287, once we get the digits that we want, 1, 2, or 3, 4, whatever, then we come here, we take the value of that, and stuff it into the first factor. Now, it, in other words, if we've selected case 8, 12, 15, 16, or 17, then we've selected an operation. We know we're done building our factor. We've selected all the digits we want to build into that factor. We're selecting an operation. So we go, go to assign and assign takes the characters we've typed in, the numbers we typed in, takes the value of them and stuffs them into factor one. Plus we've got our operations st st stored. We know if we want to add or subtract, multiply or divide, but we still need the second, second, uh, Factor. So now we come up here, we type one or two or three, however many digits we want. And then when we're done typing in our digits, we go to equals. Well, first we go to assign, which builds factor two, because this is now one. So the temp factor, take the value of that, the numeric value, stuff that in the factor two. This is the sign. Then we go to equals. Now equals... This is where we do the actual math. We have factor one, we have factor two, factor two, and we have our operation. So if the operation is plus, then our answer, our, our, of course the answer to our, our equation is equal to factor one plus factor two. If the operation happens to be negative, or, or sorry, subtract, minus, then answer equals factor one minus factor two. If it's op times, if operation is times, then of course times factor one times two or factor one divided by two or, now this is interesting, this is a percentage. 
if the operation is percentage, we take factor one times factor two times 0 0.01. Yeah, 0 0.01. What this does, it multiplies the two factors and then moves the decimal two places to the left to get the percentage. So, uh, then once we got that, we store our answer, our numeric answer. We take a string, string uh, representation of that, in other words, convert it back to string and store it back in temp factor. Once we've got that, we return. Uh, actually, I'm, I'm sorry, I skipped over a step. We locate on the screen we bring, change color to 11 that's like a, a light cyan print equal so we know it's an equal sign then we return we come back here we take the temp factor and locate print using temp factor this is our answer now first the temp factor was the was the the first factor factor one then it became factor two now it's our answer so we print it and that's what shows up on screen Okay, and then just loops around. Uh, I, I should uh, go also here. Here's 17, 18, and 19. Do you remember character is run here? Now the clear button, that's actually key 17, 18, and 19. This is 20. So it looks like one key, but it's actually three. But we treat them the same way. And we do that here. In case 17, 18, or 19, K, the key, equals clear. Nothing. We cleared it. And go some clear num. Now, uh, where does make this full screen here? Uh, ba -da -ba -da. Clear num, yes. Clear temp factor equals nothing. K equals nothing. Locate 832, print nothing, and return. That's pretty simple. So we've got our, our, main, our main loop here. This is where it just basically it scans the, the key, the mouse, and the keys, which key you're over. And if you press uh, the mouse button over key one, then it takes seven. If it's over two, it takes eight. It, keys equal nine. Operation equals divide. Keys equals four, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, depending on what button you're hover, hovering over. Once we've selected all our buttons, we select an operation, we go to assign. It takes our characters, the one, two, and three, eight, nine, seven, two, one, two, five, four, whatever, takes the, the factor here, takes the numeric value of that, of those characters, stuffs it into factor one. If factor one is already full, then we take the same value, stuff it into factor two. And if we've clicked on an operation, we know what operation we're doing. It's either add, subtract, multiply, or divide, or percentage. Then once we're done putting in our factors, we click on equals, and it brings it down to the equals subroutine. We select our operation. If it's this, then that, basically. We take and do whatever math we need to do. If it's a plus, of course, we add the two. If it's subtract, we subtract, multiply, or divide, get the, the, the percentage of. We then take our answer, store a string representation of it, a string version of it, of answer, back in the temp factor. We come back up to the main loop, and we'll locate, print, using this is how many spaces we want to show in, in our, our answer temp factor and we do this so that it doesn't go over like you don't have a, a number 800 digits long out going outside the, the keyboard so that's what that's all about it just formats how it prints and it keeps looping around 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 around, around until or unless you go to where is it uh, mm -hmm. uh buttons buttons where is buttons yeah, this is buttons. Oh, no, up here. If B equals 1 and H equals, uh, H is greater than 540 and V minus 70, then as we pointed out earlier, we're over to the right. We're up here in the top right corner. That's the quit button, and it just goes sub quit. So quits down here. Dee -dee 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 -dee. Quit button. Call mouse 2 to turn off the cursor. Clear the screen. Then we locate and print our next screen, which you'll see here. Run. Uh, say 56% of 789 equals that number there. We clear. Now, we're, we're no longer over the keypad here. We're over here. We click the quit button that calls the quit subroutine. Boom, clears everything out. And now it prints this. Thank you for using Cubase Calculator. Have an incredible life. Remember, you're an amazing person. That's you, not me, you. Bye bye now and click mouse button exit. Boop, we click and our program's done. But here we're in, in the QBasic editor, so press any key to continue and right back to QBasic. Hang on one second, you gotta pee. Right back.
Ah, that was refreshing. And if my mom asks, yes, mom, I washed my hands. <laughs> anyway, so we're back. Uh, yeah, we uh, print the thing. We click. Uh, oh, here, this is interesting. Now, like I say, we get to we hit the quit button. We bring up this screen. Prints all this happy horse. Happy Horse Hockey here. Thanks for using QBasic. Have incredible life. Remember, you're amazing. Blah, blah, blah. But then click the mouse button, exit. Now here, if you remember, I think we used this for our, one of our last programs. Like, yeah, the uh, the Pong 3, I believe it was. We do mouse 3 loop until B equals 0. In other words, we do. We call the mouse to find out what button's pressed and loop until B equals 0. So if you're holding that the B button down, it'll just wait for you to release it. Now, do mouse 3 loop while B, B equals 0. In other words, the, the screen will wait for you to, you know, until you're pressing the button, it waits for you to release the button, and then press it, and then it exits the, the, the program. You go to clear screen and system. Now, system, this is, a, I, I pointed out system in the past, why I like to use this, but let's just do this. Well, I'll edit this for a moment. We'll call this, instead of system, end, and comment that out file save exit all right we'll start dos box here boom i use dos box to to run qbasic on this computer because it's a newer computer and qbasic won't run without it so we go to uh keyboard c cd c nope code it's hard to type with this camera in front of me qbasic we type QBasic and escape, boom, file, open, do to do, QBA11. Right, and we run, go down here, click run, dot da dot da da, done our math, quit. All right, and there we go. And we're back at the, the QBasic editor. Well, we kind of like to get away from that, so we'll exit here, back to the command line. Let's do this. Uh, QBasic run QBA11.base. What do we think will happen? Well, it's going to load QBA11.8.base and run it automatically. Run. This is going to get boring after running and starting all these times, but I promise it'll pay off because we've done our math here now. We quit. And what happens? Hey, have an incredible life. Goodbye. Get the heck out of here. What happens? All right, back. Oh, back to the uh, to the Cubasis screen again. Why is that? Well, if you recall, we changed. Where is it? We changed system to end. So we'll change this back to system. File, save, exit. Now we'll try Cubasic, run, QBA11 dot base, enter, and it'll run our our program. All right, we'll try two times two equals four. Okay, we're done with the program. Get figured out what we need to know. Now we quit, and what happens? Thanks for using QBS calculator. Have an incredible life. Click mouse button to exit, and bang, back to the command line, not to the, Q, the QBasic editor. See, that's why I like that system command. Uh, for Well, I mentioned earlier, system is great because if you use just one system command in your program, it uh, avoids confusion. You can find the end of your program immediately versus end. It could End could be uh, end if, end select, end uh, loop, end, end sub, whereas there's only one system command. You just search for system, boom, you find the end of your program. But also, it returns you back to the, the command prompt, the, the system op, operating system, I guess is the technical term. If you run QBasic, QBasic with the run time parameter here, QBasic, run, got to use run, type in your program, QBA11.base, and as you saw earlier, it runs our program. Da, da 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 quit. Thank you for using, goodbye. But you have to use system. It doesn't do with end, you have to use system. Okay, that's about that. Now, exit, boom. Okay, so we're at the, the window screen here. And I have set up a shortcut to start QBasic, load uh, QB11, the calculator program. And then, like we had before, we just run it. 
Now because I have run this with the slash run command line parameter, I quit. Thank you for using, goodbye. And eventually, bang, it drops us back to Windows, not to the QBasic editor. So it's, that's one reason I like the system command so much. And um, hopefully this will have explained a bit about how to use the mouse. Uh, we've got a practical program out of it. And you know, something I'd like to point out is, let's just get back to this here. I know you're sick of seeing it, starting and ending the program, blah, blah, blah. Here we go, DOSBox doing this nonsense. Okay, what do we have here? Well, we've got keys, but honestly, this is really just a menu program. I think of this like an icon on your desktop. Each of these little keys here is an icon. You click this and something happens. Click that, something happens. Just like QBasic itself, you know, the drop-down menus you got. Well, there's one menu. There's another menu. There's another menu. These are, you're clicking somewhere and something is happening. It's basically just a menu program. In some cases, you're selecting a number. In others, you're selecting an operation, or you're clearing a number, or you're finding your total, or even quitting the program over here. Again, this is the power of the mouse. So you think of everything basically like a menu, really. Uh, and so that's all there is to it. Uh, I guess I've got nothing more to add. Hopefully that was clear enough. Uh, again, if you have questions, just, just down there, say stupid, what are you talking about here? Tell me things I, I need to know. Um, yeah, so there you have it. And I guess we'll, well, for this point, I'm done with the code for now. We'll quit here. Bye, bye now. You're an amazing person. Don't ever forget, you are an amazing person. And we're gone. And now we, uh, no, not quite done yet. We got to do our superior section now. And um, yeah, after that, I guess a brief goodbye. See you. Hang on. It's coming up. Superior. Superior. Okay, now as I mentioned when I started the superior section on this, this crap show, Dr. Doodle's QA6 Asylum, uh, well, there are uh, honestly a lot of, of pages to, dedicated to programming, specifically QBasic. So, and again, like myself, uh, or personally, I am uh, interested in many, many different things, and I encourage you to, to find new interests as well, uh, not just programming. There's so much life out there, but this next gentleman calls himself Asa Clay. Wow, talented is not the word. This man is amazing. And uh, it's cool because uh, actually a, a mantra has something he mentioned in one of his videos really kind of stuck with me and almost it kind of inspired me to start this whole this whole uh, page because well his mantra is uh, finished is better than perfect and you know in other words it doesn't need to be perfect just get it out there get it done and if I had not heard that if I just tried to get these videos perfect <laughs> well you see the results of this mess right uh, you'd have nothing so without that mantra you've got you wouldn't have had this. I wouldn't be here and you'd just be doing something productive instead of listening to my nonsense. So you've got the Ace of Clay to thank or to blame, depending on perspective, for everything I put out here. This man, you know, check it out. I'll show you a screenshot. This, you got to check him out. Amazing stuff. Ace of Clay, check him out. All right, well, as I mentioned earlier, this gentleman, he calls himself the Ace of Clay, and again, just an amazingly talented individual. He does these sculptures that just blow your mind. The talent, it, what, not only is it amazing to watch him work, but just to see his techniques, I had, ne had no idea that, that clay could be sculpted the way it does. And look, we've got the creepy polymer clay sculptures, the Huntress, Making Moon, all these amazing things. I obviously can't show you his videos, the uh, copyright nonsense and all that, but <laughs> you've got to check, check this fellow out. I mean, even, of course, nothing to do with programming and such, but just, wow, it's amazing to watch. I just love seeing people with this kind of talent and uh, really give him a shout out. Uh, but yeah, so check him out, Ace of Clay. A number one, thank you, my man, for putting this, these great, uh, this great content on, on YouTube. Love it. And you guys, all right, we'll see you in a bit. Bye. Hang on. Well, looks like we're done here. That's the QB calculator program. And again, questions, throw them down there. I'll take a look and try and answer them. And, uh, you know, I don't beg people to like, subscribe. Then that's just too much pressure. you got your own life to live. Just do what you want. But I will say, if you happen to know anybody who might be interested in this, or someone you want to torture, just just send them over here. They because if one person can find one fact that help them over a problem, then pfft, oh, this is worth it in my my mind. So uh, yeah, just spread the word. And yeah, that's it for now, I guess. Um, so, hasta la pizza, baby.